bags. Thanks for tuning in to Accounting is a Joke. I'm Dr. Who, and it's always my humble pleasure to add some fun in the fundamentals of accounting. On this platform, you don't need boring textbooks or confusing tutors as we chase the bags with this accounting information. Remember, gang, accounting ain't hard. It's really a joke, and I'm here to teach you the punchline. Bags! Okay, as of now, we should already know that inventory is one of the most critical assets for a merchandising company because it allows the company to generate revenues and earn gross profit. Throughout any given period, inventory is constantly being purchased and sold at various amounts. At the end of the period, an issue arises in where we have to calculate the cost of ending inventory for the units we have left that will report on the balance sheet and the cost of the goods sold for the units that we have sold that will report on the income statement. In this video, we'll be applying the average cost method. Now, the average cost method can get a little tricky, but just understand this, gang. All we're doing is calculating the average cost of the goods we have available before the sale. By doing that, that will allow us to be able to calculate the cost of goods sold for the units that we've sold and the cost of ending inventory for the units that we have remaining. So without any further ado, let's take a look at an example using the average cost under the perpetual system. Okay, gang, so we are getting ready to calculate the cost of goods sold and the cost of ending inventory using the average cost method. But before we begin that particular detail, let's first identify how many units are available and how many units have been sold. So, in order for us to calculate how many units are available, we're simply going to add beginning inventory plus all of the purchases. Therefore, we see in beginning inventory we have 20 units. We made a purchase on the 12th of five. We made another purchase on the 23rd of two. And we made a purchase on the 25th of five units. So if we add up all of those units, we should have 32 units available. And then next, all we would have to do was calculate the units sold. Calculating the units sold is simple game. We're going to just add up all of the sales. Now, what I also would like to do is ignore the selling price. Because again, we are only focusing on the cost of inventory. How much it costs the company. Therefore, the purchase price is the only prices that we need for these calculations. The selling prices would help us calculate our sales revenue and our gross profit. But for right now, we're going to ignore those selling prices and now add up the units that were sold. So we have 10 units sold on the 20th and we have 8 units sold on the 30th. Therefore, that gives us a total good sold of 18. So if we subtract 18 from 32, that will tell us how many units we didn't sell or how many units we have left in ending inventory, which gives us 14. So again, gang, regardless of what method we use, we're gonna always have 14 units left in ending inventory, and we will always sell 18 throughout the period. So now we can calculate the cost of goods sold. Always start with your cost of goods sold first, gang. And so since we're practicing the perpetual system, we have to break the sales down in chronological order. So our very first sale happens to be on the 20th for 10 units. So since we're practicing the average cost game, we need to first identify how many units we have available before this sale so that we can calculate the average cost of the units available. And so, what we need to do is ask ourselves, right before the 20th, the first sale, how many units did we have available? So if we look before the first sale at the top of the list, we notice that we had 20 units in beginning inventory, and we had five units from a purchase on the 12th. Therefore, our total 
units available before this sale happens to be 25 units. Now, all we have to do now, gang, is calculate the total cost of those 25 units. And so how are we gonna do that? Very easy. Cost of goods available for sale at the time is gonna be the 20 units at $10. And we're gonna add the five units that was purchased on the 12th at 12. So our total cost of goods available for sale is 260. Therefore, we're gonna take $260 and divide it into 25, and that will tell us the average cost of the units we have available for sale. Our average cost, as of right now, for those 25 units is $10.40. So, of those 10 units sold on the 20th, they had an average cost of $10.40. So now we've already successfully found how much the cost was of the first set of units sold. We're gonna move on to the second sale, gang. So the second sale, at the bottom, we sold eight units. So, what we have to ask again, because we had some purchases, how many units do we have available for sale before the sale of the eight units on the 30th? So, Let's go back to the first average cost. Let's focus on this first average cost calculation right here, gang. Remember, we had 25 units initially with an average cost of $10.40. But we just finished selling 10 units with an average cost of $10.40. So if we started out with 25 units with our average cost of $10.40 and we sold 10, how many do we have left with our average cost of $10.40? Obviously 15. We have 15 remaining with our average cost of $10.40. Now, on the 23rd, we made a purchase of two units at 15 then we made another purchase on the 25th of five units at 20. so how many goods do we have available before the sale of the 30th well we had 15 units remaining at an average cost of ten dollars and forty cents then we made a purchase of two units at fifteen dollars then we made another purchase of five units at 20. So 15 plus seven gives us 22, 22 units. So our new units available is 22. And so again, we have to calculate the cost of those 22 units to calculate our new average cost, gang. We have 15 units left at an average cost of $10.40. We also made a purchase on the 23rd for two units at a cost of 15. And then on the 25th, we had purchased five units at a cost of 20. So if we had 156 plus 30 plus 100, that will give us $286. Our total cost of the 22 units is $286. Therefore, our new average cost, that will give us $13 on the dot. So those eight units that we just finished selling had an average cost of $13. So now we've accounted for the 18 units sold. So we can calculate our total cost of goods sold. And so if we add that up, we will get 208. $208 is our cost of goods sold using the average cost method. So now that we've calculated the cost of goods sold, we can easily identify the cost of ending inventory. Before we get into the cost of ending inventory, we already know that we have 14 units 
left in an in inventory. And we just have to figure out where those 14 units came from. But let's go back to the very last calculation of our average cost from the second sale. If we focus on our very last calculation from the average cost of the 22 units we had available at the time, how many of those units are still remaining? Remember gang, we had 22 units initially with an average cost of $13, but we happened to sell eight units. So how many units do we have left? If we started out with 22 units and we sold eight, obviously we have 14 units left. 14 units left in our ending inventory, which means we do not have to do another average cost calculation because all 14 units in ending inventory have the average cost of $13. Easy breezy, gang. Therefore, our cost of ending inventory is simply going to be the 14 times 13, which is $182. So there you have it, gang, a perfect illustration of how to properly calculate the cost of goods sold and the cost of ending inventory under the average cost method. Hopefully you was able to follow all the tips and tricks so that you can rock and roll to the right answer under any given circumstance. If so, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the channel with your friends so they can chase the bags as well. As always, gang, thanks for your time and patience, and I will see you soon. Bags!